Hey everyone, this is Mayur. Welcome to MLWorks. In this video, we'll be discussing and implementing anomaly detection using autoencoders. So in the previous video, what I've done is I've implemented autoencoder and also an application of autoencoder, which is image denoising. Now we'll be using anomaly detection and with that, we'll be understanding how we can use the objective function of autoencoder, which is reconstruction error to identify the normal from anomaly data. So first thing is first we'll import all the important packages that are required to build the model and also do the train and test split and also evaluation of the model. So let me import all these packages here. Now here we have something called as ECG data which could be taken from this particular URL storage.googleapis.com and the ECG data contains 140 columns and one label target label and it will be a 0 and 1. One is the scenario where you have a uh, normal or regular uh, ECG and uh, zero is the cases where you have uh, abnormal rhythm of ECG. So we'll be importing and uh, just uh, see the head of that particular data set. So we have five rows, which is the head and 141 columns, including the target or label. Now, next we'll do something auto encoders, right? They work on only features. It doesn't require labels to train a model. Okay. Since it is a reconstruction error, we are trying to reduce. So auto encoders, when I say reconstruction error, it means like, uh, the auto encoder takes the input and it tries to copy that input as output. That is the point of auto encoders. Okay. And we'll try to do the same here and we'll understand how the reconstruction error helps in identifying the anomalies here. So the first thing what we are doing is once the data set is imported, we'll be segregating the labels from the data, raw data, and we'll have here we'll contain the features. It will contain the labels X and Y, and then we'll form the train and test split of this particular data set along with the labels. Now we'll be, if you look at this particular uh, data frame, right, we have values ranging from minus three, minus four, two plus all the plus values as well. So what we can do is scaling on top of this particular data set using min max scaling. First we find the minimum and then we apply min uh, train data minus min by max minus min. Similarly for the test data and then we turn it into float 32. Now, uh, as I said, the data set, the label contains zero and one. One is that's a positive uh, a normal uh, rhythm of ECG and zero is abnormal rhythm of ECG. So based on that, we'll be segregating the normal uh, train data, normal test data and anomalous train data and normal, uh, anomalous train test data and train data again here. Once that is done, we'll look at one of the uh, data point of normal uh, ECG, which looks like this. Okay. Now we'll look at the normal uh, abnormal rhythm of ECG. It looks like this. Since we understood this part, like we have segregated the data set into normal, abnormal rhythm and now we'll be training a model, okay, auto encoder model on top of normal uh, rhythm data, okay, which is this one, normal, normal train and normal test. Let me put it back here, remove the cell. Now we'll be training an auto encoder on normal train data. So before that, we'll be initializing the anomaly detector. Okay, so as uh, required for auto encoders, we'll be having an encoder and a decoder and a bottleneck layer. And this is the encoder. And the layer, what we see here is uh, layers dot dense. That is your bottleneck layer. The output of encoder is passed to the decoder. And again, uh, it will be generating the regenerating the input. Four. So let's uh, understand this. Uh, see, we have seen that each data point has 140 columns. Okay. And that 140 columns will be compressed to 32 floating point numbers and we'll have an active activation function relu, And then that will be passed to dense layer, which is again compressed to 16 floating point numbers and relu activation and followed by eight floating point numbers relu activation function. Now the output of this is then passed to this decoder, which will be trying to regenerate the uh, compressed layer. Okay. And we'll get 16 floating point numbers, then 32 and then 140, which is our input, which we have passed. 
okay and in the call function what we see is the flow of the input to output and here we are trying to uh, initialize the class of anomaly detector and then we are adding compilation function for Adam optimizer and the loss which is mean absolute error so let me run this cell now what we are doing is if you see here normally what we do is we will have normal train data and then we will have something called labels okay here something will be like a label but in this case we have x train again x train okay because we are trying to regenerate the input again and we are running this particular auto encoder for 20 epochs batch size of 512 and we are trying to validate the trained model this is happening uh, in simultaneously this particular evaluation with validation data so if we see here <coughs> so we keep seeing that after every epoch the loss is keeps on reducing for validation loss as well now what we'll do is we'll try to plot this from the history dot loss history dot validation loss and we'll plot this if you notice here, um, training loss is continuously decreasing as we train and even the validation losses keeps on decreasing as the epochs are increasing. Okay, so if we keep again, if we more add for few more epochs, there is a very good chance that it will continue to reduce a little bit more. Now what we will do is, we will understand the reconstruction error for normal rhythm. So since we have trained the model, now what we will do is, we will pass a test data here and we'll encode and decode that and see the normal the input data and the output data okay the input and the turn the, the model which outputs the copied part of the uh, input okay so we'll try to regenerate that and see what is the difference between the uh, input and the generated input that is the output generated input is the same as output in this case this is an auto encoder okay and we'll find the difference between these two that will be our construction reconstruction error this is for the normal data so if we understand this particular graph okay this is our actual input blue color line okay what we see here and the red color line is the output of the particular model for that particular data input so this blue color line is passed as an input to the model and it has been given the red color line as the output what we see here the reconstruction now the difference between the input and the output is called as reconstruction error. Now this is for a normal rhythm data set. Now what we'll do is we'll try to pass an abnormal rhythm of ECG and try to understand uh, the how it has generated the reconstruction error or reconstruction line rate, how it has generated. So here in this case, if we see, uh, this is an anomalous data, the blue color point, actual point and red color line is the output of the model for this particular input blue color input this is the output and the difference between these two is called as the reconstruction error now uh, this is for particular one particular data point what we have seen is this is for one particular data point now we'll try to uh, build a histogram for normal rhythm for all the data points and let's see so this is the reconstruction error for all the data points for normal rhythm of ECG and if we now what we'll do is so how will you what uh, tell uh, yeah particular uh, ECG is abnormal or normal so after us since we have trained a model on normal data set okay it will have a mean, uh, a mean reconstruction error and uh, any deviation from this mean okay then there is a possibility it is an anomaly so in this case what we are doing is uh, the reconstruction error is one uh, plus one standard deviation of mean reconstruction error of normal training data. So here if we see a uh, mean of training loss plus one standard deviation of uh, training loss which is help us in giving this uh, threshold for identifying if a particular ECG graph is normal or abnormal. So when a reconstruction error greater than this is coming up, then it means the particular ECG graph is abnormal, anything beyond 0 0.03. Now this is for this particular histogram is for normal train data where we have this is the reconstruction error for all the data points combined together. 
now we will be doing the same thing for abnormal rhythm and we will notice that uh, majority of those abnormality if you see it is going beyond 0.3 majority of them are 0.3 okay and the number of samples for this particular abnormality it is maximum at 0 0.5 0 0.05 i mean okay now what we'll do is uh, since we have the model already and we have trained the model now we have the test data set which is uh, abnormal data set also we have and we have corresponding classes as well now what we'll do is uh, with the help of this threshold we'll identify the data points which are abnormal so here we pass the data and then we are setting the threshold and we are again getting the loss as well here uh, let us run this now here we have predict function which will be calling this particular uh, function here model data and threshold <coughs> and passing the test data set and then we are also printing the stats of accuracy precision and recall so let me run this so if you see the model which was trained the anomaly detection model auto encoder okay it is 94.4 percent accurate in detecting the abnormal from normal data set normal ecg graph i mean okay so and if you look at the precision it is 99 percent uh, correct and the recall is 90 percent which is very good for what a model which was trained on just 20 epochs so with the help of this particular auto encoder we managed to build a anomaly detection which is very good in terms of all the performance metric so i hope you got uh, what we are trying to understand here with the auto encoders and what we reduced is uh, we managed to find the standard deviation has the point which will help us in detecting anomaly from normal and abnormal graph of ecg with that i'll conclude this video thank you so much